Um, so guys, uh, I'm not even going to do an intro. Maybe I should, maybe I should not. <laughs> but today I am an, I am at Aunt Diary. Auntie Jackie's. Auntie Jackie's Diary. Diary. Yes, Auntie Jackie's Diary. This is a very amazing, amazing lady. And since this channel is about positive things, yes, and inspirations, here is one from me to you and from Auntie Jackie. So Auntie Jackie is a very interesting lady. She has been living in the UK for quite some time, for 30 years, she says. And uh, yeah, 30, one, two, three, 30 years, three decades <laughs> in the UK. And uh, today we are here, so she gives us a story we need to know. She relocated back in Uganda recently. So we are going to be chatting with Auntie Jackie. She's going to give us a brief tour of her home and then all the things you should know. If you're in the UK and you're Ugandan and you're stuck, do you come back or do you juggle around? If you're in Uganda, what should you know before you go to the UK? So this is an interesting video. Make sure you stay up to the very end. Please make sure you subscribe. Make sure you turn on your notification bell so that every time I post a video, you get to see it. So let's get into Auntie Jackie's story. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so Auntie Jackie, I finally made it to your house. Finally made it to my house. You have a beautiful ah, house, by the way. <laughs> came today after I've had a border accident, but so there's the look. But yeah. Um, we move on. That's mm -hmm. our Uganda. But yeah, thank you very much for coming, Lynn. I'm mm -hmm. really, really honored and I'm, I, I appreciate so much. Listen, so many, you know, it says in the Bible, so many are invited, few come. Mm -hmm. So that's it with you. <laughs> so for you to come here, it's yeah. an honor. Thank you. Mm, you're welcome. And thank you for inviting me to your home. So, Auntie Jackie, we are here so you can take us through the story of how you landed yourself in the UK and all about that. When did you go to the UK? So I went to the UK after my O levels. Mm -hmm. Now bingo, finished on a Friday, and on a Saturday morning, I was on the plane to the UK. Wow! I had no idea I was going there. My mom just ferried me over to the UK. Wow! Well, how, how old were you then? Uh, in my teens. Oh, uh, in my teens. <laughs> <laughs> in my teens. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So why did you go? Did you go to study? Did you go? Um, initially, mm -hmm. for sure, uh, I think my mom, too, it was going to, normally when we finish all levels in Uganda, we have a long break. Mm. And my mom was very, it was a very intelligent woman. Yeah. I had started um, hanging out with a certain group of girls mm. and she wouldn't tell me not to do it. Mm. She acted. So I think initially that's why she did it. She, she didn't tell me, she just took me. Oh, okay. Those are rich kids' problems. The rest are taken to the village. <laughs> you guys cannot testify. The rest of us, we were taken to the village. She was taken to the UK. <laughs> Listen, I've never even thought of it that way. <laughs> Ah, Honestly, okay. I, never, I never used to consider ourselves rich. So. <laughs> so, how did you land? How when you got there? What did you? What was your first impression of UK as a teen? The first time I got there, what struck me was the lights. Mm -hmm. Remember, I'm from Kabale. Yeah. And I would come from Kabale to Nabingo, Nabingo, Kabale. So the car would pick me from home, mm -hmm. drop me to Nabingo, drive me back home. So I never used to go around Kampala so much. Are you here? Rich kids' problems. <laughs> so, so when I got to UK, the first thing I saw was lights. Mm. And I remember I found their cousin, a cousin-in-law. We had been together here, so she had gone two years before me. Yeah. When I got there and I saw her, I'm like, ah! Her name is Monica. I said, Monica, what mm. <laughs> She was like... Because she had gone so white, so light. I'm like, wow. So that was my first impression of England. Mm. Second one mm -hmm. was the getting dark at 3 o'clock in, in, in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. So we were going shopping with mommy, mm. with my mom. Mm. Mommy. <laughs> I know, at over 50, I still call her mommy. We had gone shopping with my mom. Mm -hmm. We go to the shop at Oxford Street, also in Oxford Street. I come out. And it's dark, and we're like, oh, mommy, to talk here. Go and eat to talk here, mommy, to talk here. She could not stop laughing. She goes, no, 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 no. 
But the funny thing, I looked on the watch, it was mm. 3.30, but it was so dark, so I thought my watch had stopped. Mm. This mommy type by Ira. Mm. So those are my two, the, my first impressions. Oh. No, no, the third one. Yeah. <laughs> trains. Trains. Underground trains. I had never, never seen an underground train in my life, of course. Mm. And it was, it was like, phew. Mm. <laughs> so yeah, that was it. Oh, okay. Among, among other, so many other things, but among other things, yeah. Oh, so did you go through university? I did. Mm -hmm. I did. I went through university, but as a mature student. Mm. So eventually, my mom started paying for my school fees, mm -hmm. but uh, I wasn't studying. Mm. And um, I thought, no, it's unfair. Yeah. So I told her, no, mommy, you know what? I'm going to work and pay. Because mm. I could work for a few hours mm -hmm. and then pay. But I mm. didn't. Instead, I worked and, instead of pay, and I didn't pay. And I squandered my money. So I didn't go to university. I didn't do anything at that time. <laughs> But when my mom found that I hadn't gone to university, mm. in my late 20s, she goes, you have to go back. Oh. I was a woman of substance. Wow. So I went back. Wow. And I finished university and master's. Tell us about your first job in the UK. What was it like? Oh. <laughs> Anybody who wants to go to the UK, yeah. go prepared to do anything. When I mean anything, it's anything. I, my first job was to work in an old people's home. Now. The old people's home I was working with in is for those who are um, uh, literally, it was a nursing home, so most of them are really, really unwell. And so I was working with some um, Nigerian colleagues mm -hmm. and Nigerian sisters there. But the particular Nigerian, not all Nigerian, but that particular, the particular I was working with, mm -hmm. the Nigerian I was working with was not very good at all. Mm -hmm. So because I went there, at that time as I was working, I was 17, so I started mm -hmm. working there, I was 17. Oh my goodness me. She got me to, to help her with um, a lady who had a gangrene wound. I had never seen a wound which is gangrene. It's mm -hmm. like, almost like a rotting, rotting fresh. <laughs> fresh. Rotting flesh. Flesh. Yes. <laughs> okay. And um, so I was helping her, and of course the moment she opened the wound, I just... <laughs> So basically, your first job was looking after an elderly person. Yes, but the first actual work I did mm. that was to help with that wound dressing. Ah, and that was my first ah, okay. baptism of fire. Okay. I had, I just she goes, "Are you pregnant? Are you pregnant?" <laughs> and so they pushed me away. I'm like, "No," because and so for for quite a while, for about a week or so, I could not hardly eat anything. Mm. But eventually, I got used. I got used to the job. I, you know, we are quite a few young people there. Mm -hmm. So I started getting my social life in that place as well. Yeah. Mm. That was my first job there. So you say you've been there for thirty years. What did you learn most about being in the UK? Right. So, like a life lesson. Life lesson. Mm. Life lessons about working hard. Mm -hmm. So nobody will do it for you. And I think had I stayed here, mm -hmm. I would have been relying so much on my parents. Mm -hmm. So, but when I went there mm -hmm. and I told my mom ABC I can do it myself. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness me! You have got to work. Was there's nowhere that you're going to go and get bananas. Mm to eat there's there's nowhere that you're going to go and get um, bananas to eat mm -hmm. there's nowhere that you're going to go and you know you plant your beans and you eat them no because in any case I was in a bed I was in a small flat mm. um, did you get married did you have children <laughs> married <Did you? laughs> eligible bachelor <laughs> at 50 <laughs> so no um, I've got three kids yeah. and um, sad enough, my relationships didn't work in the UK, mm -hmm. but i tell you why, uh, that's, another thing, that's another conversation of why relationships in the UK don't work, quite a few relationships in the UK don't work, so that one did, mine did work, um, mm. but I'm not ashamed of that, I'm mm. so proud because I've got three beautiful, beautiful children. That's how God wanted it for me to have those children. Yeah, that is it. No. <laughs> but my lesson there is working hard. Okay. Mm. So tell us about a bit of why did you come back to Uganda after all that time in the UK? Well, because because 
for us who are in Uganda, that is like a dream. We are dreaming of going to the UK. But this lady right here just came back. And I was forced to come and ask, why? Why did you come back? So, let's go and sit down and I'll tell you why we came back. <laughs> just go sit down. Yeah, we are not going to sit down because when we sit down, eh, we are going to get bored. So, my people, we are taking a, a walk, walk around as she shows us. Meanwhile, this is her gate. <laughs> this is her look. <laughs> <laughs> that is oh her look. This is my look, guys. <laughs> Listen, I, I, but I'm so I'm so blessed. Somebody gave me money and mm. to put pillars. So I bought money for the pill material for the pillar here mm. and the pillar there. Oh. So once I get the, the money for labor, mm. then I will put the pillars and then we do the gate. But yeah. So. Okay. So. She she was telling us, I don't know, I want to make sure I can, because she's very beautiful, I don't want to be unjust to her. I want to make sure, uh, uh, ah, but the sun is too much on you. Like this? Let me see. If you guys remember when we were in, when in secondary school and had to take pictures, <laughs> we do this. <laughs> so you're asking me what, um, yeah. why I came back. Mm -hmm. um, we are going to walk, but it's too sunny, so I've come under the shed. Yeah. So I came back because life became unattainable for me in the UK. Yeah. Uh, personally. I struggled um, three years. When COVID hit, yeah, that's, it's easier that way. When mm. COVID hit, mm -hmm. I started working from home. And uh, I was able to balance my childcare. I've got a beautiful nine-year-old boy and my work balance. So when COVID hit, I was able to work from home and mm. it was okay. But after COVID period, um, people started, children started going back to school and I was still working from home. Mm. But then all of a sudden, my uh, employer, employer ended my contract abruptly. I have worked as a contract worker for so many years, so that ending of that contract was not a new thing for what, me. What is a contract worker? Contract worker. So you work on a almost like a weekly basis. They call them zero hours. Oh, okay. So you don't get uh, quite a lot of benefits which other people get. Okay. And to me it was working hmm. because I could um, manage my time and manage my children. So I always had the risk of them ending work like that was always there. Hmm. But because at the time I was so used to working from home mm. and I had no home of my own, I had to look for another employment. And most of the employment I was getting, they wanted me to go in the office. Mm. And I couldn't manage to go in the office, be able to drop my son to school and work. Mm. So it became unattainable. Wow. And that was the last straw. Apart from many, many other things, that was the last straw. That's why I came back. I'm like, you know what? I became unwell because of that. Literally, my pressure went high, risk of high blood pressure, risk of, sorry, risk of heart attack. I ended up in hospital. Mm. My son ended up in hospital due to some accident. It was too much. So I'm like, you know what? I have an unfinished house. Mm. I'll go and stay there. Mm -hmm. So I came almost the way I left. I came back the way I left to go to the UK. That sounds quite heavy, quite heavy, like had you not saved up some money or oh, you don't want to talk about that? I won't go into too many details, mm. but yes I had saved up some money mm -hmm. and then um, I went into two things, somebody scammed me here in Uganda, they scammed me so much. Oh wow. And then after that's coming, I thought, let me try and uh, put the other money in a, in a venture. And again, I was scammed. <laughs> wow. So, that sounds horrible. So my, life, my life savings went. <laughs> that sounds bad. It does, but um, for the one for the venture I went in, I mm. went in with my eyes open mm. and I thought it was a good venture. But you know why? When, when things are too good to be true, mm. they are too good to be there, they are too good to be true. Yeah. So I was <laughs> yeah. 
You are? So I was, um, yeah, so I came with really for no service because of one, one, that, one, that reason. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. So you guys, I think the only thing I've picked from here is don't be too trusting. If you stay in the UK, in America, whatever, if you're not staying in Uganda, even if you are doing something in Kampala and you stay in Imbalala, please be there yes. by yourself. Yes. Don't trust your parents with money because they will eat it and you can't report them anywhere. Don't trust money with your friends. You'll take them to prison and you'll still not get back your money. So anyway, Auntie Jackie is going to be giving us a little bit of tour of her house. And then she'll be telling us if we should go to the UK or not. <laughs> <laughs> so Auntie, um, how are you finding Uganda so far? I love Uganda. Yeah. It is beautiful. I'm at peace. Yeah. I'm, um, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a destitute. I'm not that, I'm like poverty, poverty. Yeah. But I'm so used to having my own money. Yeah. And uh, having money as I want it, when I want it. It's like that, you know, we work get money. Hmm. So that I'm struggling with. Totally mm -hmm. struggling with. Mm -hmm. Secondly, things are so expensive if you do not have a regular income. Yeah. Thirdly, I have got to learn to cut my clothes, Expert. my jacket, as the clothes I have. Yes. Um, and that's the reason for today, for example, I fell on a border <laughs> because Aww. I was going to go, I was using a border to go to take my son to school. Um, so you relocated with your son back and then you're putting him into a Ugandan school? Yes, it's a Ugandan school, but uh, the curriculum they are using mm -hmm. is uh, an American one. Oh, because okay. it's, like, it can, you can do both home-based and, and schooling. And the reason I went for home based and schooling is because I live very far. Mm -hmm. Like when it rains, mm -hmm. we can't this we can't we can pass. Here we can pass. Yeah. But we can't pass across the, the hill. Yeah. Yeah. I saw that. Yeah. And also another thing that like, like for example like today, mm -hmm. I fell, but there's an option of him staying at home. Mm -hmm. And he can still say he won't miss anything. Yeah. The third thing I like about that school is about his ability, not about the grades, not about the the uh, you know, like in the UK, you mm. go by age. So if you, oh. yeah, you, nine year olds are all together like that. But whether you know or not, you go by age. Oh, okay. Here it's about them testing you, and the testing so real, real and so you know, it's, it's so. So I didn't like that school. I went for this one here because they have each child is taken by on their own merits and on their ability. Mm -hmm. So with his class, you find there's 11, 12, 7 and it's okay mm -hmm. oh okay tell us about this beautiful home guys the variations in uh, the video is because of the sun we are filming under the sun mm -hmm. so bear with us this is a very beautiful and completed home when did you come here when did you shift independence day we shifted oh October so those October the 9th, which happens to be my brother's birthday. Yeah, so we can never forget. <laughs> That's when I shifted here. Yeah. But so I, who, who was building the house for you though? My beautiful niece. She mm. did a beautiful job. And hadn't it been for her, the, you know, I told you I was scammed. Yeah. Hadn't, hadn't it been for her, the little bit money of money that had remaining mm. would have also gone. But she managed to get that money and put up this building. Oh. She came in and she came in for me. Her uh -huh. name is called Patience. <laughs> but she came in for me. Patience, thank you. Thank, thank you, you for being a good niece yes, to our yes, auntie. Yes. She's no longer your auntie alone. Okay. She's ours all now. <laughs> oh, she did a good job, I tell you. Uh, okay. Mm. So, guys, basically, this is how Auntie Jackie's home looked like. Can you? estimate for us how much this house may have costed you the house alone not the land you know what mm. if i'm saying over 60 million i may be like maybe under underestimating yeah but the reason it, it was like that is because of where i was building mm. 
it's on a hill. Mm -hmm. So almost down there, we put so much money. Mm. And, and patience, we did think about, talk about it, patience. But for it to be on a, on a better level, yeah. we had to do that. Yeah. And um, so before patients came in, mm -hmm. my nephew had encouraged me mm. to use the, these books. Okay. And I thought, oh, I want to use the matafari as opposed to blocks. The matafari is like what? I've I seen them somewhere. Matafari. Yeah, there in a the corner. Yeah, you guys who have watched yeah. my video, you know the bricks in my house. Yes. Those ones. That's what I wanted to use. Because these ones here are slightly um, more expensive. I actually hear mm. that these ones, mm. these bricks, mm. these uh, cement bricks, mm. they make the work move quick, like yes. faster. Yes. And I think you think they are more expensive <laughs> because mm. you are not here. So definitely they will, they will cost you more. No, because of patience, mm. they didn't cost me that much. But whatever they cost me then is what they are costing me now oh. when I'm here. Okay. But, I was thinking when I when I looked at the cost of that, mm. I'm like, not couldn't I have finished this house, okay. put my wall, yeah. and the, whatever money was remaining, put everything up. That was my that's my thought. <laughs> How true it is, I don't know. So, if any if there is any Ugandan out there who wants to go, because truth be told, even if it was me. <laughs> given the the visa to go to the UK I'd be on the next flight so what advice would you give to any Ugandan regardless of the age generally would you give to a Ugandan who wants to go to the UK two things if somebody has got a job that is giving them some income here or a business mm -hmm. some income here Mm -hmm. I'll tell you don't go. Don't go to the UK. But if you really want to go, go. But expect, don't go there to expect to an easy life, no. You're going to work hard. When I say work hard, you're going to work hard. If you're at the job for nine, it's at nine. You finish at five, it's five. Not five to five, five. And sometimes 10 past five. Mm -hmm. You have got to go and follow the regulations and laws. Here, we cut a bit and it's a bit of relaxed. Mm -hmm. And so, those are the things I'm telling you about. You go there and relax. There's going to be cold. When I say cold, freezing coldness. <laughs> freezing coldness. It goes in your bones. So expect that. Expect loneliness. Because, um, you know, here, even if I'm my, on my own, I can get... Um, I can get... Uh, for example, I don't know if you saw the young boys who came here. Yeah. They'll just come here and sit. Mm. And then at times we sit, I'm like, you know what? When I'm going to have dinner, I'm like, come and eat dinner. Mm. Or even when they're there, they'll just sit down and eat dinner. Mm -hmm. That is one of the things I'm finding here that I knew anyway before I left. But I'm also, I'm relieving it again. So when you go in the UK, there's that loneliness sometimes because you can't even knock on your neighbor's door. Wow. Tell you what, mm. quick, quick story. When I first went there, I was living with my aunt, mm. my mom's sister husband mm. and we ran out of salt and I'm like ah ah auntie what are you can't you gamble neighbor to your moon hey my auntie they pulled me up so quick I said where are you going say ah and I said say you don't ask what I could not be I'm like what I said but I saw her and I spoke to her mm. they said don't ask oh wow and so that 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 is the reality of mm. um of of of, uh, of UK mm. not everything is bad yeah. Not everything is bad. Yeah. If one is lucky enough to have a, a visa and a work permit. Yeah. And you get your job, you get your money. Mm -hmm. Weekly, monthly, by uh, fortnightly, you get your money. It's there. Mm -hmm. Though you spend it, because mm -hmm. there's bills. Mm -hmm. Don't you know you're going to get your thousand pounds? Mm -hmm. You live maybe if, if you just go there and you're located and you live in a bed seat. Bed seat about five hundred. Mm -hmm. So you're gonna be spending five hundred pounds. Wow. So, for people who support uh, families in Uganda, mm. they do struggle so much there. Wow. They do, but I quite mega. Mm. I've got my Kenyan friends say, Minetifunga. Uh, like, 
Mwino kwe siba bidi. Mwe siba bidi. Ngo ina family mm -hmm. in Kampala. Like if you have a family you're taking care of. Let's say you have a wife mm -hmm. and you have children mm -hmm. and you have to send them back money. It's not going to be that easy no, initially. So you have to tighten your mm -hmm. seat belt. Tighten mm -hmm. <laughs> seat belt. And it's true. Yeah. So you have to tighten your seat belt until the money. Mm -hmm. And I think I've seen if it's a couple, mm -hmm. they... they Fair better. Uh, it becomes easier. Okay. Or if it's a single person with very few responsibilities back mm. home, mm. again they fare better. Mm. Yeah. Okay, what advice would you give to those people? Because I know, I know for a fact that there are other people in uh, UK, in France, in Canada, in uh, Portugal, Germany. in Germany, in Australia, wherever you are, and you're stranded, like you went there for green pastures, and things are not turning out the way you wanted or expected, or things were good, like has her case was and then things got bad like in my case things were good and then they got bad and I had to come back home what <laughs> what advice would you give to somebody who is stranded there and they're scared of coming back home my daughter Lynn because by the way Lynn is as old as uh, old enough to be my daughter young enough to be my daughter yeah I came this time because I was you know I was pushed hmm. you know when you say was mm. the I was pushed. Or send this time yeah. Like you've pushed somebody who is already squatting, so it's already that's easy for them to fall. To and also, that's one thing. And also, I always say, God closed the doors for me hmm. to the point that even after 30 years, I tried to look for housing and I couldn't get it. So I was essentially hmm. going to be homeless. And I'm like, Really? So that's one of the other reasons. But I tell you what. Mm. One thing that was keeping me away from coming and mm. held me until August mm. was from April. Things were not working. I was working from home, but things were not working because I was work I was earning to live only. Mm. Even money for saving was difficult because of the expenses they you know that had gone up. Mm. So, for, so for such a long time, and at that time, by the way, I had not gone in that venture, so I still had some little money, mm. so I could have used it to come. Mm. But shame, hey, shame was clouding me, shame was involved me, oh my goodness, I was so ashamed. The shame I had was, after 30 years, mm. you're coming to Uganda with nothing. I was like, oh my goodness me. And I was ashamed of the people that I was with who were like, for them they were like, Selling and I was going down. But when God closed the doors for me, I said, Jacqueline, leave your story, leave your life. And so I came. So my advice to my brothers and sisters who are there, if you're in the same situation as me, come, leave your story. Because me being ashamed, I was living the Joneses life. They wanted to be like the Joneses. And it ended up it ended me up in hospital ended my child up almost in hospital because I would, didn't have where to leave him and I was putting him left, right and center. So, I would encourage anybody, if you're in the same situation as me, cover your shame and come. And the moment I got here, by the way, the shame went. So, that's my encouragement, come. <laughs> <laughs> So guys, I will not show you my face because, wow. I don't know. I... <laughs> Somebody wants to cut onions for me. Yes. <laughs> ah. It's well. But we have to. We are strong women. Mm. Iron, ladies. Iron ladies. Anyway, um, Auntie Jackie, yeah. I cannot tell you how much this story means to me. Mm -hmm. Maybe to somebody who is watching. I'm glad you had which cousin, which niece. Patience. I'm glad you had patience to help you out after being scammed. I have two people, two about two people in my inbox who are telling me the same story that they've been scammed. Um, I believe I hold for me the phone so I can tell them properly. They may think so. I truly believe I'm honest. So, guys, 
her story her story is kind of tearing especially because i have been in her position before where you feel like if i go back home they're going to laugh at me if i go back home how will i start again like that is you've never been defeated until you feel like that but i would love to say that if you don't have any person to trust i know you are just meeting me online and you've never seen me but i believe i am honest and uh, since i have a channel i'll be posting everything almost you can see if you don't have anybody you can trust i know i'm putting myself in a very tough position because yo it's hard but you can trust me to look for you for something a small plot of land so you can put up your small home if you still have the little savings if possible so you can come back and have a place to stay all right please do not die of depression don't kill yourselves home is fine we are okay we are not living like in the flashlights and, and then but we have health care faster than in the UK like if I want to go to the hospital I just get on a border and I'll see a doctor which is not the same as in the UK you will have to wait for ages yeah and uh, if I want meat I can even get fresh meat like a cow that was killed yesterday and I eat it or today morning you understand like please come home there is no shame in, fa in falling and getting back up there is no shame in starting over again all right i i was a musician like i already told you and i was frustrated i was ashamed i was all those things so i all i want to add you is if you don't have anybody to trust and if you've been scammed enough allow me be your last option please because i would love to see a community of people coming back to settle home don't die there don't go homeless if you can come back home please come back home anyway i don't want to make this story very very long i would like to say thank you so much if, if you've watched to this end and i would like to say thank you to auntie jackie thank you for having me on your channel i'm really really honored yeah. um kindly if you're watching me for the first time my name is auntie jacqueline my youtube channel is auntie jackie's dairy jackie with a q uh, please come and join us and become family, become a bigger family. Yay! <laughs> Thank you. Blessings and blessings. Please come back home if it's tough out there. Come. Okay. It's not, it, it won't be a bed of roses, but neither is a bed of roses where, where you, you are. are. Here you can ask for salt. You can go to the neighbor and be like, I don't have water. Give me a gel can yes. of water. And I'll give you a gel can of water. You can go to, like for me, the previous month, I was eating from my neighbor the whole month. <laughs> wow. I was feeding from my neighbor because she knows I have no money to feed for myself at that point. So she was feeding me. Come home now. Come. <laughs> okay, guys, thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in another one. If you'd like to see more stories from me, please make sure you give me a recommendation of where to go next. Bye. Blessings. Bye-bye. <laughs>